Now what I'm gonna show you is my little cross cut sled uh, using the uh, match fit clamps. So let's say I've got some cutting to do, but I don't want to hassle with the big sled. So I just grab uh, this little mini sled that I have. It's uh, one runner. It's got cut with the dovetail uh, grooves so that I can use my match fit clamps. And uh, it's actually got a flexible fence on it, meaning the fence isn't fixed and then tested with a five cut method. Micro Jig probably doesn't want me to tell you this, but I found that uh, their little devices can go cattywampus and a little difficult to use and are expensive as all heck. And I realized that I could use just some T-bolts. So I've got some T-bolts in these slots. Uh, just nothing, just from, you know, Home Depot for next to nothing versus whole bunch of money. <laughs> so anyway, uh, try. Now what I did do was I had the half inch uh, at the bottom T-bolt and I did take my uh, angle grinder and I ground them down to be slightly smaller. Uh, so that they would slide easier in these grooves. Uh, with, since this is a flexible fence, I have to set it if I want a 90 degree cut, although a lot of the cuts you're doing, you know, you're not really all that worried about it, but uh, let's assume that it only takes a second, so why not try to do it? Now, I've got the bigger sled, and that obviously is designed to have a fixed uh, back fence on it, uh, that will give me the uh, perfect cut, that, or at least as good as I can get it, using the William Ng five cut method. So there's my sled on there. It's gonna slide here. You could just use it that way. A lot of people say, yeah, but what about the cutoff, or what about supporting uh, your cut in the back so you don't get tear out? That is so easy. I haven't fully done it the way I'm gonna do it yet, because I'm gonna put slots, dovetail slots, into these and then be able to use the clamps in those slots. But until I get that done, let's say I wanna get a little cut done here and I wanna have uh, a sacrificial fence on the back of this to support my cut. So there it is, I just did it. Let's suppose that I wanna do cuts at three inches. So I've got three inches marked on a board here and I want to do a whole bunch of these. So I can just put a stop block, in this case, the one, two, three block, right at three inches. Well, how am I going to secure it there? Well, just with clamps. Uh, I'm also going to do stop blocks that have the uh, dovetail grooves in them so that they will go into those grooves and have no profile here as opposed to being sticking out. But, you know, until you get that done, which is later today, you can just do it this way. All right, so now I got this and I'm gonna do this cut and uh, a little nervous about my hand being down here and I can't really put a clamp over this. So what am I gonna do? Well, that is pretty much the entire reason for doing a match fit cross cut sled. This is my mini sled for quick and dirty cuts. And so I want to hold that down. I can just slide a match fit clamp in here, hold it down, and my fingers are going to be nowhere near that blade so I can do repetitive cuts time after time. Let me get my uh, blade up high enough. All right, the next thing you might be saying, well, okay, that's fine, but that piece is gonna fall off. You got any solution for that? Well, just like, and maybe, I probably can't see it on the film, but I've got my Incra, a sled over here. The only reason I don't grab it all the time is because it's heavy and it's cumbersome and to do everything with it. So I reserve it for when I'm doing uh, 
uh, angle cuts and, and a lot of cuts where I need really, really precise uh, because of that Incra gauge that I have, miter gauge. But I'm not going to grab that every time I want to do a quick little cut. All right, so what's the solution for for that? Well, hanging right on the same nail on the wall is my cutoff board. It's just, uh, it's got its own T-track. And it was just, <laughs> it's a rectangular board with a runner on it. The first time I left it oversized and then I cut it with this blade. So now it gives me zero clearance uh, with that blade. So now my drop-offs will be on there. They won't drop down if that bothers you. So put it down there if you want it. Sacrificial fence, stop block, hold down, fall off piece. <laughs> Easy peasy. So I got to do a bunch of cuts. <clears throat> All right, well, let's see how fast uh, or how quickly we can put all of this away so that we can use our table saw for other stuff. There's one. I found here, good to pound it down, keep it nice and level, and then it slides out easy. Take this stop block off. No problem. Got my one, two, threes right there. Remove my sacrificial fence. That's getting a little worn out there, or you do it with a dado, and so it's wider, and this, so it's no good anymore for others, and this beauty is you just slap this up there and put her on. That's my little sled. I, uh, <laughs> I love it. I grabbed that. And I did a little talking there, otherwise I could have put that away much quicker, but there's my sled and the underpiece right there above my several hundred dollar Incra. How much money do I have in that? Let's see, plywood for the fence, plywood for the bottom, already owned a dovetail router bit, and sort of bought four clamps for so the clamps are for a bunch of things. I'm going to use the clamps for my big uh, cross-cut sled. I use the clamps for my drill press table. I use the clamps for my bandsaw zero clearance table, my bandsaw tall fence. I use the max fit clamps for my router uh, track jig. I use them for my table saw, excuse me, my circular saw jigs for both my big powered one and my battery one. I just use different sides of the track. So I, uh, because I'm using them for so many things, I went ahead and bought myself a total of six of these. They're $45 for a pair. Uh, I hope you like that one. Easy to make, easy to use. Small Workshop Guy, signing off. <laughs>